Hello everybody, it is Julia here. As I might have mentioned a few times in my previous videos, I am doing a PhD in computer science, but never have I mentioned what that even means. So I thought that for today's video, I might give you a bird's eye view on the field of computer science so that then I can start talking about what it is that I do in particular so that we are on the same page. So today, what I want to do is to give you a little less than six minutes introduction to computer science. It's quite a tall order, so I would like to start right away. So I'll see you after this video. Okay, let's make the most of the time that we have and let's start from the beginning. In the beginning, there was a very small but very powerful piece of hardware that is called the CPU or processor. The details of which are definitely outside of the scope of this video. They are more in the field of electrical engineering and it's definitely not something that I'm very knowledgeable about, if at all. So let's just assume for the sake of this video that we have a CPU that works and we build a system with that. The first thing that we might want to build is a system that is called an embedded system. It's fairly simple, although quite complicated to build, and it can be anything from a LED in a USB to something like an onboard computer in a car. If we go a bit beyond these systems and we add complexity and we add resources that might be memory, storage, like a flash SSD device or uh, networking capabilities like a network interface card, then we need to manage all these resources together. And in order to do that, we need to build an operating system like Windows, like Mac OS or Linux, in case you're using Android, for example, that runs Linux. If we have these systems, we have the resources that are managed for us and we might want to amp up the complexity of the system a little bit. So instead of using a single computer, why not connect many of them together? So let's have more resources, more memory, more processors, and let's just link them together to make something powerful. Actually, I'm drawing them with a screen and a keyboard. More realistically, I'm talking about uh, basically a rack in a data center where there are many computers stuck on top of each other and they all collaborate together to do something like running YouTube, running Facebook or running Google. They all share resources like CPUs or memory or storage and they contribute to the bigger goal of the data center and in order to manage all of this we need some additional piece of software that we usually call middleware because it's something in the middle between operating systems and the application that runs on top of it. However, now, so far we were looking at the system with a white box approach. We were knowing and we were aware of the resources that were in the system, but that might be just too much complexity for us. At some point we might just want to use the system instead of designing the ways in which we can use it because we have the resources at all the levels, be it the CPU or be it the middleware. In that case, we can take this black box approach and just consider the computers as single systems that do work independently. It can be a computer, it can be a smartphone, or it can be a smart washing machine. I don't know, because humanity has gone too far with Internet of Things applications, or it can be a data center. And all of them might want to communicate one with the other to, to do and implement some application. In this case, how do we do it though? Like the single systems work, but they might be working in different languages. One might be talking in English and the other one might be speaking Italian and they're not really going to understand each other unless there is some intermediate layer of protocols. In that case, what we're talking about is some internet engineering, broadly speaking, and the terms are a bit lax in, in this case. And this deals with the design of a common language that allows potentially very different systems, a washing machine or maybe a data center, to communicate one with the other. But once we have that in place and once different, possibly heterogeneous systems can communicate, we can finally get to something that we might be more familiar with, which are all the applications that use computer systems. And maybe it's something that is all over the internet nowadays, it's AI, or maybe it's services like Netflix or gaming or Google, YouTube, what you're using right now to watch the video. Maybe it's websites and web development or emails. 
all of which use the infrastructure that I just laid out under the hood, but they're not really aware of what is happening because they don't really need to know the details and the, the nitty gritty details of the CPU management or the middleware or the internet protocols. Of course, uh, this is take it with a grain of salt. Different applications might be needing to have some insight into the resources because they use technologies that need that under the hood. But broadly speaking, if you work at the application layer, you have your own problems and you have a huge set of technologies that you need to master that you might not just want to mix with the underlying middleware and infrastructure. But so far, yeah, we had a broad overview of what actually happens under the hood of computer systems and all the different layers that you might want to be working on and in. This is me trying to give a bird's eye view of all the drawings that I drew on paper, but probably I feel badly at it. But I hope that this video was useful for you anyway. Okay, I hope that this video was interesting and useful for you to understand a little bit what it is that goes on under the hood of computer science. Of course, uh, this was just an overview. The terms might, might not have been super accurate. I had to, to give kind of a summary. So in case you're an expert and I didn't do justice to your field, please leave a comment and maybe give more details. Or if I did, said something wrong, please also explain that to me. I would be very happy to hear about it. And otherwise, if you like this video, please leave a like and maybe subscribe, just saying. Otherwise, I will see you next Sunday for the next video. Bye.